Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Range Report. Um, today I wanted to do another video using Applied Ballistics Analytics. Uh, in our last video, I used um, I used to compare 6.5 to 308, and uh, this is really just going to compare the different variables that uh, come into play with you making a hit or a miss when you're shooting. Um, one thing I really like about uh, Applied Ballistic Analytics is the avail ability to put in rifle and shooter error. So what we're going to do is use my rifle as comparison. I already have it entered into the the program if you see up here I have the 130 grain hybrid from Berger and let's go over here to where I had imported the last string I shot over my magneto speed and uh, I just did five shots um, my average was 29.22 when my standard deviation was 3.7 feet per second and my extreme spread is nine uh, to me for what I do that's excellent I mean it's harder to get it's hard to get much better than that. Like I said, we're going to start with this 2922. So I already have that inputted here. Because of some of the things we're going to go over, uh, extreme spread, standard deviation, ability to read wind, precision of the rifle, the target size, uh, we're going to use an average wind speed of 8 mile an hour, just coming straight across at 9 o'clock. So I have a 7.8 mil hold for elevation. And for wind, it's going to be 1.6 mils. So we're going to go back over here to WES, the weapons employment zone. One of the features, and one of the one of my favorite features in Wes is shot simulation. It'll simulate a thousand rounds with the uh, system variables that you put in. Um, so we have wind, temperature, pressure, humidity, muzzle velocity, uh, the the precision of your rifle, the size of the target, the size to the target, etc. So I've already entered in the variables for for my rifle, and what I did is I reached out to the PRS uh, members only page and just asked some of the top shooters, you know, hey guys, at a thousand yards, um, what what do you consider something that you should be able to hit reliably? Um, not what you're able to hit, but if you go out there, you should be able to pretty consistently get hits on target. And I also I also asked what they thought um, their ability to read wind was. And on average, people said between one and two mile an hour. Um, so I'm going to put in 1.5 here for the the wind deviation. And then I have my muzzle velocity uh, standard deviation of 3.7, and my rifle is about a quarter MOA. Now two MOA at a thousand yards it's going to be about 20 inches now if you look here on the target you'll see the misses off to the left and the right and there's hardly any deviation with vertical any vertical dispersion here um, all your misses are going to be from wind so 8 mile an hour 1.5 mile an hour uh, wind variation you're looking at about 63 percent hit percentage I also want to point out real quick, just for range, I usually put a little variation in there for, for range finder error, but for this for this simulation, I want to say, hey, we're at a known range. We absolutely have verified the, the distance, so we're going to put zero in there. And honestly, one meter didn't make much of a difference, but we want to make it as perfect as possible. You do see a little more vertical dispersion there. Okay, so 63.4%, that's a high hit percentage. Um, all your error is going to be wind. Now, that's saying that you get the wind wrong by, or you have a standard deviation of wind every shot out of those 1,000 shots of 1.5 mile an hour. When in reality, if you take two shots and get it on target and you follow up quickly with that third shot, you have that wind down. Um, you know, let's just say that we've knocked it down to one mile an hour. And you see there how that hit percentage dramatically goes up just by a half, an hour, half a mile an hour um, wind correction. But what I want to start off with is uh, is muzzle velocity. Um, like I said, 3.7 out of my 6.547, I mean, that's about as good as it gets. Uh, but let's say that we're using some factory ammo. And, um, you know, out of the Creedmoor, when I was shooting Creedmoor, I would notice uh, with the factory ammo, I was getting around 20 to 22, uh, sometimes 23, 24 feet per second uh, SD, which I found pretty acceptable for factory ammo. You can just pick up off the shelf. Now what I don't want to do, uh, at least in this simulation here, is I don't want to change the bullet velocity, um, rifle precision, etc. We're just going to do one thing at a time. So for on this 20 inch target, we're going to do uh, 20 feet per second SD and see the difference. And we're still shooting quarter MOA. So now we're at 60.4. So let's go back and look at the 3.7. So 3.7 was 63.4% uh, hits, and then with a 20 feet per second muzzle velocity difference, 
we're at 60.4. Now you see where those shots are spread out a lot more? That's because you're having a lot more vertical dis uh, dispersion. Now, your hit percentage isn't much different. So we're at, um, you know, you're hitting 95% of the shots that you would if you're at 3.7. And that's with that same one mile an hour wind air. So what I want to do now is let's go back to the 3.7 where we have a 63.4% hit percentage. And let's let's move up that wind air a little bit. Um, let's say you get down and you're shooting and that, that wind's starting to change and you just haven't quite been able to read it just correctly. You know, a lot of times when you're shooting prone, there are um, barriers in between you and the target, obviously, where that wind is going to be harder to feel and harder to see. So if, if we're at a 2.5 mile an hour wind, wind air, we're dropping down to 41%. And 39%. So your, your amount of air there is pretty similar. Um, you're still seeing that vertical, disper vertical dispersion there. Which is, you know, that's what you're going to have with that 20 feet per second of um, standard deviation. Okay, when you're shooting these long range matches, you're not always shooting at a 2 MOA target. And you're not always shooting at 1,000 yards. So I kind of wanted to go on the other end of things and look at a KYL on the smallest KYL. Uh, I reached out to Jordy Richardson of Outbutt Precision Rifles uh, Rifle Club and asked what his KYL was. And he said at 450 yards, it was around 4 inch target. So I entered that here. Now, if you're shooting the KYL and you're at that smallest target, by it's usually going to be your fourth or fifth target. By this point, you have your wind down a little more. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that wind air down to one mile an hour. And if you see here, we've got an 88.3% hit percentage. Now we're looking obviously at a much smaller target, and that standard deviation is coming into play here. I'm, that one mile an hour can push me left or right of the target, but as far as uh, vertical dispersion, I'm right in there. Now let's take everything else being the same and do a 20 feet per second difference. Or I'm sorry, a 20 feet per second SD. Okay, so now we're at 87.3%. So we're not seeing much of a difference here. We're, uh, you know, you have a 2% better chance of hitting that target if your SD is down to 3.7. Even for me, that's pretty uh, eye opening because I really like my SD to be below 10. But here it's showing pretty clearly that if you're, you know, you're still shooting a quarter MOA rifle and you have a 20 SD, there's only a 2% better chance that you're going to hit the target with that 3.7 uh, feet per second standard deviation. We'll do another example right here with standard deviation. We'll do a 1 MOA target at 1,000 yards, 50%. And we'll do the 20 feet per second standard deviation, 34%. So that is where it's going to come into play. So on a small KYL, you're going to be pretty close. But when you get out there to um, a thousand yards and you're on a one MOA target, okay, now this is really where you're going to see that vertical dispersion making a difference. You're at a 34.1% versus 50%. That's a 32% difference, which clearly there's not going to be a lot of one MOA targets um, and precision matches at a thousand yards, but they will be out there from time to time, and they will. Um, well, that will definitely come to play. Let's say if you're a hunter and you're really wanting to get that hit in the kill zone at a thousand yards. Uh, so that's where that SD is really going to make that difference. One thing you'd also think of is what percentage of the shots are going to be 1 MOA at 1,000 yards, and that number is pretty low. So what I've done is I've went back to the 20-inch target with the 20 feet per second standard deviation, and I've put in the 1.5 mile an hour of wind air. Now on that last simulation I did on a 1 MOA, one MOA target, we were still at 1 mile an hour wind air, and there was still that 32% difference in uh, ability to hit the target. So We've put in our standard wind air back in here, and we're going to focus more on the wind in this simulation. So 1.5 mile an hour wind, 20 feet per second standard deviation, you're back at this 60.4%. So I think that this shows here that really your ability to read the wind at a 2 MOA target at 1,000 yards is really going to be what's most important for you getting that shot on target, at least when you're looking at something around 2 MOA. So just finishing up here, I want to look over one more thing. We're going to go back to that KYL target. And that KYL target was um, 450 yards, that's 411 meters, 4 inch target. We got 71%, now, and let's go back to the 1 mile an hour, which is what we started with. So we got 88.3%. So let's say you've hit that fourth KYL, you're moving to the smallest one, and you know, you've got that one down, but it picks up just a little bit. Now you've made that error. Now your error goes from 1 to 2 miles an hour. Now if you see here, you're down at 57.6% probability of a hit. 
That's a 35% decrease in your chance of hitting the target, um, which just really goes to show if you're if you're talking about the precision of the rifle, um, how how well your hand loads are, you know, how low your ESSD is. Really, what's making the biggest difference is your ability to read the wind. So if you if you're getting ready to get out there and shoot those long range matches, and you really want to hit the most targets that you can, learn how to read that wind. I use my I use my Kestrel uh, to get a wind call before I, I lay down and shoot, and then I adjust from there. Um, outside of this thing, outside of the simulations of this program, one thing I can say is, if you get your reading on whatever you use to collect wind, and it says five mile an hour, and you get down and you shoot, shoot your first target, you know, let's say you're starting at 500 yards and you're going out to a thousand yards, and that first target you put in your five mile an hour wind dope, and you miss. Next target, you're not going to want to try and use that five mile an hour wind again. You're going to want to adjust from there, and then use that adjustment to walk yourself out the rest of the way. Um, that's one thing I can't stress enough is believe the bullet. It's it's something that I fight with uh, quite often. It's something I see happen from other people. Um, you might have the wrong dope dialed in. You shoot and you just, there's no way that that shot could be a mil low. So you think you've done something wrong and you take that same shot again and you miss again. When I took a class with Jacob Bynum at Rifles Only, one thing he told me was if you're, if you're prone and you're, you're making that shot and you miss, and you feel like that, oh, your foot wasn't in the right place, or you're, uh, you just you pulled that trigger just a little wrong. He says just keep that foot in the wrong place and make your correction and make that shot again, and you're much more likely to make a shot. Guys, I really hope this video was informative, and uh, you know if you're looking to get into a long range shooting, um, that it helps you kind of narrow down some details of what could or couldn't be wrong. Uh, like I said in the in the beginning of the video. I, I do plan on trying to make a video here shortly where we're out at the range, we're going to shoot some 100 yard groups uh, prone, and then try and shoot those same groups um, seated off of a barricade, uh, off of a rooftop, you know, just different things to induce error to see what your actual ability is to shoot off of those things. But for laying down and shooting out at distance, obviously the smaller the target, the smaller you want your standard deviation to be, but for Average size targets, uh, two away out of a, a thousand yards. Anything between four and twenty feet per second looks like it's going to get it done. Thanks for watching, guys.